Hi, so it took me about two hours to replace my air inducer motor and I want to share with you some of the tips uh, that I went through in the uninstall and repair and replacement of this uh, unit. So the first thing is that the sh instruction sheet says I have to mess around with the gas. That's really not the case. Uh, the only thing you have to do with the gas is actually just turn off the gas itself. Um, so first off, there's four mounting screws two at the top and two at the bottom and they have those black sleeves that extend all the way to the back of the unit for the mounting and you'll have to save those spacers what they call spacers that is more like a plastic sort of straw where you insert the screw into so make sure you uh, retain those four spacers uh, at the bottom left corner is a drainage tube so you'll have to remove that depending on what type of clip you have in my case I had to use needle nose pliers so here is the pressure switch and I have to remove the bottom tube and the bottom tube you just pull out uh, it's not a big deal and there's two mounting screws here where you also take off for the pressure sensor and after you remove the pressure sensor uh, so here I'm, I'm just uh, turning off the gas so make sure you turn off the gas there's four things you really have to turn off in my case and I remove this panel to disable uh, a switch here at the bottom so once I remove the panel it disables a switch here and at the top here I actually have my electrical so I turned off my electrical and the last thing that you have to turn off is really the burner itself and these are all just uh, precautionary um, they, the unit itself shouldn't turn on once you turn off the uh, electricity so I turned off the burner here just in case so just make sure you do those four things uh, just to be on the safe side and remove the electrical just by squeezing this and pulling it off so that's the connector to the motor the electrical connector to the motor here um, so the next thing is just to uh, take off the pressure sensor so the pressure sensor is mounted by the two screws um, and so remove the two screws uh, they're pretty deep they're about three quarters of an inch um, and you see at the bottom of the pressure sensor is a tube and I, I actually pulled out that tube just wiggle it gently so so in uh, in all these cases if there's something that's stuck uh, that has to do with the rubber pieces just wiggle it off uh, very gently and and it usually comes off pretty easily so you see I hung the pressure sensor up at the top uh, with some tape and I uh, just to get it out of the way uh, so you see here I put some tape at the bottom right corner is my uh, drainage exhaust and you'll see I have it removed but you'll, you'll notice I put some tape where the original position was so I know how deep I have to push it back in when I reinstall it so make sure you put some electrical tape there uh, just in case uh, and I actually needed paper towels because there was a lot of water there when I removed the exhaust the exhaust and you'll see the tape that I have here uh, which marks the original position and I removed uh, and I wiggled it out and there was about two inches left in the PVC and you'll see here uh, the PVC has two inches left so what I first did is you, you'll see this triangular mounting point and the triangular mounting point they say you should put silicone on it and make sure you buy silicone that's rated at 400 degrees Fahrenheit uh, even though it doesn't really get that hot maybe it gets 80 degrees Fahrenheit but um, uh, you'll see the drainage pipe here and the electrical but I, I really want to talk here about the mounting point that triangular mounting point and I, I struggled with this uh, mainly because I wanted to do a test run where, where I put the unit in there just to make sure that the mounting points were flush from the th this is the old, old unit here that I'm showing you so there's two points that actually help you align but they didn't really help me align too much be, because you can't really see or feel whether it was aligned and and here's the uh, spacers that I'm talking about so make sure you re retain these spacers so um, so I actually scrapped uh, doing the actual test run where where I do the uh, test mounting uh, b because what I found what I found was that I had to align the four screws at the, t the two screws at the top and two screws at the bottom just to make sure it mounted so so the test run itself to actually test the mounting didn't really help uh, so so what I did was I, I put the silicone I had to scrape off the old silicone and put the new silicone uh, 
on the mounting surface of where the furnace is and once I did that I actually uh, put the uh, put the assembly in there and align the four screws so you'll see here is the silicone that I have and I use the silicone uh, in that triangular piece and you'll see uh, in the background here I actually replaced uh, the new assembly already and uh, but but that was the main thing was uh, I did struggle with putting the assembly in there during my test run when I try to do the test fitting without actually putting in the four screws that doesn't work because what aligns it is really the four screws once you have the four screws aligned then the triangular piece itself will align automatically um, so there you go that that's really it um, and, and you'll see in the background with my electrical tape on the exhaust um, and uh, you know I, I just turned everything on but you, you'll see how convenient it is if you mark that exhaust with electrical tape so, so you know how deep you you've put in the pipe uh, right here uh, because the you, you, last thing you need is to second get, guess yourself whether you've you've put it in deep enough uh, uh, but in any case uh, that's really it and uh, uh, send me any questions you have and uh, I hope this helps and uh, thank you for watching